Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you notice in the back, my cat actually peed and pooed on my bed, so I had to take my bedding off. So disgusting. It's because I left for Miami and he missed me. Gross. Even though my roommate was here, like he had company. This is gonna be a story time of how I reconnected with my family after four long years. I know it's crazy. A lot of people were wondering because they followed me on my other social handles and like I talk about my family a lot more now and everyone's like, what's going on? I thought you got disowned. I actually reconnected with them in spring. So I'm gonna give you guys the whole tea on how that happened. I feel like it's a little fast for you guys because I feel like I just posted my video of how I got disowned, but it was like a long process for me. So we need the, we need the closure. Yeah, let's get straight into it. Actually the first year that I was kicked out my dad actually did reach out to me even though he said he didn't want any contact at all he did reach out to me at some point during covid and he had asked to meet in london but i wasn't in london at the time i was staying with a friend's family because school obviously shut down and everything and i didn't have a place to stay so my friend let me stay at hers for a couple months um so i was in a different city and i was a little scared when he messaged me like i saw that and i was like what what is he planning like what is he gonna try to do and i also thought that the family i was with was also gonna be kind of like what are you doing so i was just i was scared of him i thought he was gonna do something bad i was just like i don't really want to meet up with you so i kind of made the excuse of oh covid and i don't think it's a good idea you know i might be sick with something i don't want you or anyone to get hurt and this was actually during eid so I did find out later that he like he still didn't want to keep a relationship with me at that point But my mom was really upset over things. So he just wanted to have me over for Eid So that's why he wanted to meet up to ask like if I wanted to come just for Eid Which I thought was really cute like I would have gone but honestly I was terrified So I didn't want to I, I felt like it was too early in terms of my mom that first year We actually did call each other frequently not frequently, but and she kind of became a little bit aggressive like i don't want to say the things that she said but she said a lot of things that hurt me and were just like really bad for my mental health like i was already depressed and just the things that she was saying made me feel so much more worse i just can't take it anymore i'm literally crying every day like it's not good for me bittersweet it's like you want to pick up her phone call but you know you're just gonna feel horrible because they just like guilt trip you and just make you feel shitty about everything that's going on. I eventually had to block her. And when I did block her, I also blocked my dad. So honestly, this was like good for her as well. For her, she needed like an out of sight, out of mind type of thing. If she could continue calling me, it would have made her feel worse. Like she even said that calling me and talking to me made her feel worse. So my little brother kind of became the middleman between us. Like if there was anything that I needed to know, if I, I wanted to check in on how my mom was doing, my little brother would just let me know and I would meet up with him occasionally in the city. Yeah, I just felt like I kind of started picking my life back up again. And that's when, you know, my mom was talking to me and then I just felt like it was bringing me back down again. So I felt like it wasn't good. I was like, where were you when I was when I was literally homeless. I had a little bit of resentment there. I continue on with my life. I'm doing stupid things, honestly. I'm not proud of who I was in those two years. Um, and then I, this year in January, I had officially, I guess, broken up with my boyfriend, my cheating ass boyfriend. I break up with him, start healing on my own slowly but surely. And as that's happening, my brother actually reaches out to me and says that my uncle who's visiting from another country wants to come see me and talk to me. And my uncle, like we barely ever saw him really. Like we talked to him on the phone, like seeing him every four years was like a normal thing. I was never really close to him, but he really loved me. And apparently when I was younger, I was very close to him and I was very attached to him. So he obviously like knew he knew what was going on in our family and he just really wanted to reconnect with me and talk to me about things and he just kind of wanted to be a middleman for me and my dad. So I'm like, I agree and I tell my brother like I want him to be with me. So we meet up. As soon as my uncle sees me, he starts crying and I'm like, oh my God, so cute. 
cute. He hugs me, he starts crying. He's basically just saying how he's so happy that, you know, we're meeting and just like, he, he kind of knew things, but he's like, I want to hear your side. Tell me what happened. And I kind of go on about what my life is like. Like I tell him I'm, you know, doing influencing, I guess, promoting makeup products, I guess. And I just tell him I'm honestly a normal girl. Yes, I've made mistakes in the past, but I'm genuinely like a good person. I just dress a certain way and like, I don't want to get married in the traditional way of how my parents want me to. I want to date someone before I marry them. Like I, I need to get to know someone before I marry them. Like I can't just marry them right away, which was like kind of a big thing in our family. Like even my cousins, they knew their husbands very little. And I just, I wasn't okay with that. I really wanted to know the person before I got married to them. I'm not exactly traditional in that sense that I want that. And I'm talking to my uncle and he's just like listening. He doesn't really say anything. And then when I'm done, he's like, yeah, yeah, understandable. And I'm just what? It was the first time that someone didn't freak out at me. He says, oh, your dad is pretty strict and stuff. And he grew up very traditional in that sense. And, and he said that myself, you know, I never got married. I had a white girlfriend who wore bikinis and wore dresses and stuff. And we had a kid together and we never got married. So me and your dad are definitely different in that sense. He's like, like, I understand the life that you're talking about. You know, it, it's normal to me. Like he doesn't, he said it, he, he doesn't find it weird. It's because he grew up a little bit more westernized. He told me to, I don't care who you marry as long as you're happy and it's a good person. He's like, I don't care if he's Christian, if he's Muslim, if he's black, white, Asian, whatever he is, I'm just happy for you if you find your person. And I was like, you sound like some some white dad right now. This is weird. I never thought I'd hear that coming out of someone's mouth, but he was very liberal, I guess, in that sense. He basically has explained to me that all he wanted was my family to just be together and just be a family, not talk about whatever is going on in my life, my opinions on things, their opinions on things, just be together as a family, laugh, have food together, and leave it at that, and that's it. You guys don't need to go deep into conversation about your views or your values or whatever. I just want you guys to be together as a family. I want us to all sit down together and eat food and have a good time. That's all I want. And he's like, don't worry. I will speak to your dad about it. He basically like reassured me that, you know, I wasn't a terrible person because that was a thing for me. I feel like every time I spoke to my family about anything, they would just think that I was a terrible person. And I didn't think I was. I'm pretty critical of myself and the things I do. Maybe not in the moment that I do them. A little while later, I realize my mistakes and I realize what I've done wrong and stuff. And still till this day, like I don't feel that I did anything horrible. I feel it was just a regular girl who grew up in a Western world. If I grew up in Afghanistan, sure, I might've ended up being a different way, but it's just how I was like what I was raised around. And I think for what I was raised around, I'm really not that bad guys. Like I don't, I'm not doing lines. I'm not doing that crazy shit. A few weeks after this meetup, my little brother messages me again. Yo, dad's been saying he's been trying to get in contact with you, but you're not responding. And this is like the last time that he's going to try or he's just done for the rest of his life. And I was like, he messaged me one time. Like, what does he mean? I've never, I've never gotten a message from him. I realize I'm like, wait, I blocked him. So I unblock him and I tell my brother, can you just let him know that he was blocked and that's why none of his messages got through? Cause I honestly didn't mind meeting up. I was just really happy at this point in my life. At this point, I mean, a few months ago, like I feel like I was on a good track. I feel like I've been on a great track, honestly. I'm so proud of the person that I am today. Regardless though, I felt that I was ready to talk to him. I felt that it was time and I don't hold any resentment towards them. And if they wanna pursue a release relationship, I'm okay with that. I was always okay with that. I just never thought that they were okay with that and they never expressed that they were. I always thought they just hated me and were like, stay the fuck away from us. So I was kind of happy to hear that he wanted to meet. I didn't know what to expect, but I was still scared. Like I told my little brother, I was like, I'm only gonna go see him if you come with us. I'm not going alone because I don't know what's gonna happen. The day comes, we meet up. I'm gonna insert a photo here of me and my dad seeing each other for the first time after four years. Um, It was really cute, honestly. The hug looks really awkward because guys, I haven't seen this man in so long and we were never close to each other like that. I didn't feel like I could just fully embrace him. Everyone just looks so much older than 
I left them, you know, they looked so like my dad looked so skinny and I was just like, oh my god Like I felt kind of bad. I was like, did I? I was like, it's definitely my fault that you look like this right now Like you look like you haven't eaten or whatever, uh, which they like to say as well. It's my fault um, So we sit down and he kind of gives me the rundown. He's like, I'm not sitting here accepting how you are or your lifestyle or what you believe in like i don't accept the way that you want to live your life i was praying one day and you know, so my parents are very religious they go to hajj every okay maybe not hajj but they go to umrah every year and he said that god spoke to him and told him that i was still muslim and which we're not gonna go into that people always ask me if i still am or not i've never said i wasn't so take with that what you will I just don't like to explicitly say anything out loud because people like to get into their opinions and things about what being a Muslim is and etc cetera, etc cetera. and I just don't want I don't need to hear it I know what it is I know what I'm doing wrong I know like it's my business it's my path I just don't like people bringing it up and if I do bring it up in videos that's all people talk about so I just don't speak on religion at all or I try my best to avoid it if I do say anything about it they're like well why do you do this why do you do this like Haram police, get the fuck out. Like, I don't want to hear it. I still believe in God. I just don't practice. Like, I don't pray. I don't do, etc., etc. My dad said, um, so in my heart, like, and just like with God and stuff, I always knew that you were like a Muslim. And like, it's my duty as your dad to stop you or like warn you from doing things. And I shouldn't just cut you off. And that was my mistake. And he said he saw a video of mine where I said, that I've done a lot of things that I wasn't proud of and that I wish I had someone to guide me and that's why I talk about certain things previous video uh, if you guys want to go check that out I talked about an incident that I wasn't proud of that I was very ashamed of and that I was and I was warning other girls about it because like no one ever warned me about those kind of things and I wish I had that guidance so he saw that video and or he saw me talk about certain things and he said he regrets that i didn't have anyone to look up to i guess so he actually brought up as well how which i also knew about this but people were basically like messaging him about my tiktok and i tried my best to keep like my family away from that stuff i really didn't want them knowing about it but they did end up finding out because i guess people i'm thinking it's people that know us but people would send him videos and stuff like that and then i guess his number somehow someone like rando some randos got a hold of it and started messaging him and just kind of taunting him like they weren't doing it out of a good place but they were pretty much doing it to taunt him and be like look at your slutty daughter and it's not like i was posting anything crazy but i did used to post a lot of raunchy stuff you know you could say a hoe but like a hoe for brown people's standards not white people's standards if that makes sense it really pissed me off because i don't care if people hate on me but like why do you have to bring my family into it like they have nothing to do with it you know but people would really attack him for for those things it got to the point where he had to go to the police and stuff and i actually did as well because i was sick of like the harassment that i was hearing about my dad getting they kind of just said that we need to which, by the way, if you're watching this, you troll. They basically said we just have to build a report of like all the things that are being said. And if it continues to happen, that they can actually look into it and stuff. And they can track down the person, regardless of whatever fake number they're using. If they can find the location or whatever, if it continues to happen. And we have like a record and like a history of it actually happening. So that is currently happening right now. But the thing is, we haven't gotten messages in so long because my dad... My dad follows my TikTok, okay? He sees everything I post and because we've reconnected, I've been making an effort to be a little bit more appropriate online, I guess, just for the sake of them. Like what I've posted already before, it's out there. Like I can't change that. But moving forward, I said I would make an effort to, you know, not post in bathing suits. Or so I'm definitely not the most modest out there. Definitely not, but I'm putting an effort in. I'm trying, I'm doing something. But yeah, so people were like harassing him and stuff and he had to change his number. It's funny because it's always these religious people that are messaging. It's like, you're literally gonna go to hell yourself because you're harassing a rando. Like that's between my dad and God, not you. They kind of stopped messaging because there's nothing really to send my dad. And also he sees everything anyways. I had a separate TikTok account, which I had deleted a while back because it just wasn't doing well. Like the views were just getting really bad, but I had around 100,000 followers on that one. And it was literally me just posting thirst traps. And I look back at it and I'm just like, 
ew like you were so cringe bro i can't believe you posted that or like you wore that and you posted it like i was genuinely embarrassed i'm glad i've realized that now but i am pu putting an effort into just being a little bit more classier honestly even just for me it was really cute seeing my dad speak that way he felt a lot more open-minded and i really appreciated that because i've he's just He's always been so stubborn and I'm so stubborn too. Like we get that from each other. I think we meet a second time or something. He sends me off with food that my mom cooked. Actually asked if he could come to my graduation, which he actually did come to my graduation. I thought that was really cute. He's like, I've never missed any of my kids' graduations. So I was like, I mean, you weren't really here for the last four years, but like, I guess you can come. I'm joking. There's no beef, okay? I did actually... I was okay with him coming. He just came, stopped by, gave me flowers. It was still so awkward with me and him. Like, I didn't feel comfortable. Oh my god, wait, I want to show you guys my degree. I have it hanging on my wall. I'm just going to cover my last name. So cute! Bachelor of Nursing. I'm not just an airhead. So if anybody tries to come at me, being like, you're a content creator, I'll be like, actually, I'm a nurse. After graduation, he invites me to Eid. Eid. Everyone wants me to say Eid. They get mad when I say Eid. They're like, oh my God, that's not how you say it. Shut up. So he invited me to Eid. So this meant I was going to meet the entire family, guys. The entire family. How nerve wracking is that? So I show up for Eid. My mom actually has clothes for me. I meet my aunt who actually I love. I'm so close with her now. She's also super chill. I come in, I see my mom, I hug her. She just acts like everything's normal and like the last four years didn't happen. And like she's making jokes and stuff. And I'm like, she's just acting so normal. So I can't help but act normal. And then all my brothers, I guess, are at the mosque. They show up. And we're all saying hi to each other and kissing each other's hands because that's what we do if like you don't celebrate Eid. And my older brother, guys, it was like... We were chill, I guess, but it was a little bit awkward for sure. Like, oh, hey, what's up? And then I see my little brothers. So my one little brother, I've seen him grow, but the other one, I have not seen him grow. He was a midget when I left and I saw him in front of my eyes. He was a grown ass man with a beard. It was weird. It was so weird. So I say hi to all of them. Everything's kind of chill, like we're good. So my dad is kind of like the mafia boss of our family. He's the main guy. He's the one that everyone goes to. So obviously if he's inviting me, if he's inviting me for Eid, everyone has to be okay with it, even if they're not okay with it, you know? So I go up, I can feel everyone's eyes on me, guys. They haven't seen me in so long. I've had a nose job. They haven't seen me since my new nose. Like I look like a whole different person and I'm just saying hi to everyone. Obviously some of them talk shit. Like I heard afterwards that some of them were talking shit. Everyone in front of me was like really nice and stuff. And then my aunt, like my dad's sister, walks in and sees me and she starts crying. I'm literally about to tear up myself as well, but she's like bawling and she's like, you never called me. Girl, I don't even think you have a phone. She was old. My dad was the youngest. Like she could be my grandma almost. So I was like, girl, I didn't even know you had a phone. All the kids are staring at me. All the kids. Because I literally changed all these kids' diapers when they were younger. And now they're like 10... 11 12 i grew up taking care of them i left them when they were i guess in kindergarten everyone was like who's that who's that and all the little kids like the babies like the newborn babies because there was a few they were like four years old now and they were just who is that and then my parents or my uncles and stuff would be like oh who is that like that's your cousin and it was just so weird like i can't describe the feeling i felt like i was in a different world i felt like i was like i didn't belong here almost but it was nice that everyone was nice, I guess. Like no one, even though people were salty, like I knew that they were. It was nice that everyone was like friendly to my face. Me and my older brother had a conversation and we kind of cleared up some things in the past. And it was funny, like me and my brother were like just chilling on the couch and my youngest brother is like, is there beef? Why is there beef? Why is there tension right now? And I'm like, there is no tension. He's like, yeah, there is. Can you not feel it? Like you guys aren't talking to each other. Don't you guys have some things you need to clear up? You're such a shit disturber. And my little brother, this one, he never used to talk. Like this guy was mute when I knew him. So I was like, where are you getting all this? Where are you getting this mouth from? And me and my brother like, no, we're good. We're fine. 
even though there's a little bit of tension but me and my brother slowly over the months like my older brother have gone super close to each other and he's also opened up his mind a lot um, but yeah we've been trying to build that family bond i'm getting really close to my brother so i'm actually moving back to the city i'm still in london right now i'm actually moving back closer to them which i'm excited for and I'm excited to see what this new chapter holds and I'm just trying to be a better person. What happened to my family was pretty unfortunate, but I think it all made us better people. And yes, my parents don't like that it happened. They hate when I say, honestly, I'm happy that it happened because I wouldn't be the person that I am today if it didn't. They hate when I say that. They're like, no, this shouldn't have happened ever. And I honestly am like, if I hadn't gone through what I went through, who the fuck would I be today? I feel like I would be an even bigger of a hoe than I already was. I needed this. I really needed to be alone and on my own and kind of struggle a little bit on my own for me to wake the fuck up and know my worth and know my value. So honestly, no matter what you go through in life, if you can recognize the mistakes that you've made, so fucking be it. Everything's in the past. You are who you are now. So my parents say too, they're like, everything that's happened in the past, everything that you've done, all those mistakes or whatever you've made that was all in the past let's just move forward and my dad also made a really good point he said that honestly we could ignore each other right now and we obviously disagree with each other right now but i know that in like 10 20 years we're both gonna sit back and regret everything so like why wait the 20 years until we've regretted everything to say sorry then just do it right now Let's, let's just do it right now and get it over with. So that's so that's the makeup and the hair. Do I look crazy, guys? I don't know if this looks good. Anyways, I'm really happy to be reconnected with my family. I'm so interested in talking to my parents and my family now. Before I'd be like, get the fuck away from me. I don't want to talk to you. But now I'm like, I'm always open to hearing what they have to say. Like if they FaceTime me, I'm super excited to talk to them. And fuck the haters. You know, these people really thought making my parents aware of my TikTok was gonna make them more upset about me or hate me more, but it actually brought us back together. So thank you for that. I know I reconnected with my family and obviously a lot of people that went through, you know, a, a similar situation may have not reconnected with their families. Their families may have not been as understanding or were just a lot crueler than mine. It's okay. Some things are not meant to be. Some people do really bring you down. I think I was just really lucky and fortunate to have a family that eventually became a little bit more compromising. Don't get me wrong though, they're still unhappy with me. They're willing to work on it, I guess. I do think family is really important, but again, if it is a dangerous situation for you, you know, I've seen people say they haven't seen their family in like 10 plus years and like they've tried to go back, but it's just been horrible. Your happiness, if you are good, if you're a better person, if you are sleeping well at night, that's all that matters. That's basically the story of how I reconnected with my family after four long years. Thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about next. I did have a Miami vlog, but I don't know yet if that's something that I wanna post because shit kinda went down in Miami. So I don't think I'm comfortable with posting, even though I'm so sad, it would've been such a good vlog, but you know, stuff that doesn't need to be said. I mean, I would love to say, but out of respect for other people, I will not talk about it. So I don't think that Miami vlog is gonna be coming up. I'll definitely think of some more fun videos, some collabs with some of your favorite influencers are definitely coming your way. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, turn your notifications on. So my birthday is coming up really soon. I'm actually releasing a clothing line. If you guys wanna check it out, it's shop.minaco. Uh, I'll put the link in my bio, but like I'm working on this like semi-modest clothing line. So it's basically clothes that your brown or middle eastern parents would let you wear outside but like it's still cute enough to wear in like western culture or whatever because i feel like when i was growing up it was really hard to find clothes like that so yeah i'm actually working on something like that right now they're pretty basic like the first few items it's nothing crazy but like i'm really excited for it um and yeah that's it have a great day